Good evening. This is Ed Hurley he's speaking for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the world's favorite cheese, who bring you two fine plays each week, all year long, on the Kraft Television Theater. <laughs> Tonight we present the 341st play in this series, A Long Time Till Dawn, by Rod Serling. Hey, Pop! I gave you a fine dollar bill! What? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Where could she have gone, Papa? Where? Drink, drink your coffee. Do you want another sandwich? Well, I just want to know where Barbie is. That's all I want to know. So drink your coffee. Get something hot inside you. Well, I, I can't figure it. You know, I wrote her this morning. I was getting out. So I got here and I went up to the place. And the landlady says, she's moved out. So... Uh, I don't... Pop, I've been waiting six months for this. Was... Was prison bad, No, Julie? no, I, it was being away from Barbie. That, see, that was a tough part. I wrote her. I was getting out this morning. Did, did she say anything to you? What'd she say? That she was leaving. Where? Did you say where? No. She didn't say. You know, I could take prison. You learn how to take it. You work it like a... Like a pattern. So many hours, so many feet across the cell, so many bricks up a wall, and you just count and count and count and count and count. Well, you just count and count. I figure, see, it's just one round. I get out, I'll come back next door, and Barbie'd be here. But Barbie wasn't happy, Joe. It was for her like prison, too. She would come over and talk until late at night. <laughs> so many nights. And so many tears. You think it was pleasant for her here? Well, it wasn't good for either one of us. You know, I told her. I said, Barbie, when I get out, we're going to go right back to hometown. I told her, this place is too big for us. It's too big, Pop. It's too noisy. You told her. You told her, so what? what? So you told me, too, when you brought Barbie into the place. You introduced her. <laughs> now, remember, it's so good. Both of you a couple of kids. That was all you were. You said, mister, this is my wife. <laughs> you just moved in next to her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember. And you would tell me all about your hometown, Fleming... Uh, Fleming. Yeah, Fle Flemingsburg. Yeah, Flemingsburg. New Jersey. All about Flemingsburg. Another name for heaven. I was going to take her back there, Pop. I could, too. I'm out now. You know, I wrote her. You know, we were going to get a, a gas station, see, and we're going to both work in it. Both of us. Oh, we get along fine. <laughs> I wrote I was getting... Out. I don't get it, Pop. I just don't get it. Is it, it so hard to understand, you? You marry a girl from a little town, you bring her into New York, you stick her into a little room, and you go out and get into trouble. Not once or twice, but all the time. Right. How much do you think a girl can stand? Well, I, didn't, I, I stood it, didn't I? Didn't I stand it? Back bites, run arounds, dirty deal. I stood it. Oh, yeah, the Pop, you got a great town here. You know, there are eight million people standing in line out there to give you their business. That's what you always thought. But, Joey, nobody was against you. You were oh. against yourself. You acted like a fish thrashing around in a net. When all the time, if you only would stand still and be patient. I stood still. I didn't hardly move for six months. And so, Papa, it was 12 by eight and a half. Yeah, I get out and I find my wife is skipped. You got to find down here, Papa. Yeah, uh, Joey, Joey. Just, just fine. What do you say, Pop? You're open late. Convention in town? Yes, one-man convention. The Society for the Preservation of Myron Golden, me. <laughs> What's your pleasure, Detective Kate? I don't have any pleasures. I can't afford them, Papa. How are you, Joe? Great. We've gone out this morning, I understand. Get out this morning, did you? You got eyes? Yeah, 
I can use them, too. You know this kid, don't you, Papa? I know lots of kids. Yeah, sure you do. They call you Papa and you melt. Joey here calls you Papa, too, doesn't he? We have to listen to this guff. This guff is official business. You got an evil rep, Joey, for a young guy. You're out of prison just eight hours. So while it's still fresh in your mind, remember to tread it straight or you'll be back in. You understand what I'm saying? He understands. Good. I just wanted to make it clear. You got any prospects for a job, Joe? <laughs> Boy, now you're real interested, ain't you? Joey. He's trying to help. This guy wouldn't help a puppy out of a puddle. You know, he takes those big number 12s, Papa, and he kicks everybody around with them. Buddy, when I can do it without a rap staring me in the face, I'm going to take you in the alley. When I'm through with you, they can scrape you off the wall with a spoon. Joey! Ah, he calls you Papa. I'll tell you something, Papa. This youngster will wipe his eyes with one hand and slit your throat with the other. I'm telling you, miss. Oh. You see what I mean about this town, Papa? You, you serve your time, it's just like getting branded. Well, you think it's different someplace else? You remember what I told you, Papa? I got 18 years of this. And so many of them have got fresh country boy faces and big innocent eyes. And you'd be surprised how easy it is for him to say Papa. Can't you leave him alone? Can't you see his tie up? I'm tired too. You ever hear of a nightmare lasting 18 years? Joe, you got a place to stay? Joe, you got some place? Still here. I told Bobby to go. Why? She asked me what she should do. I told her to go. Papa, she's my wife. And you love her, don't sure you? Sure, I love her. And leave her alone. Let her be. For as long as I know you, you are breaking that girl's heart. I think maybe that's the way you are built. To do only that. Uh, you know, I thought you were my friend. Why, yeah, I thought, I thought you were the one real article in this sewer full of phonies. I am your friend. Believe me, Joey, I am your friend. All right, all right. Well, so where'd Barbie go? I'm not going to tell you. Papa, she's my wife. When you broke into Schultz's store, did you remember she was your wife then? When you beat up the old man, did you then? When you lied to her all the time about going back home, did you remember? I wasn't lying. Pop, come here. Come here, Pop. Now, look. You're just a dirty old man in a dirty old hash joint. Now, you're not God. Now, what right have you got to, to interfere between Barbie and me? But she decided... No, she didn't. You told her to go. Now, where is she? Even if I told you, it wouldn't help. You wouldn't change. Where is she, Papa? That's what stands between you and her. It's you, Joey. It's you. <laughs> you filthy little dishwasher. Where is she? Joey. Where is she? Who? <laughs> Where? Let me. Who? Won't do you any good, Joey. How are you? <laughs> Well, I'm a papa. So you, you told her. You told her to go home, and that's just where I want to be with her. Just where I want to be with her more than anything else in the world. That's just where I wanted to be. Can I do anything for you, Bobby? Thanks, Dad. I'll finish. There wasn't much done, Pat. I'm glad you came back. It's nice to have you here. Dad, you do understand. I didn't want to leave him. I'm alone. not asking for explanations. You're here, and I'm glad you're here. He hated the city. He hated it from the minute we got there. All he ever talked about, coming back here to live. He didn't come back. We'd talk about it for hours. He'd come in late at night, 
sit on the bed and tell me all his plans, all his new plans. And they always started with coming back home. And he didn't come home. Dad, if he could have seen the look on his face, made you want to take him in your arms like a little boy. He didn't go... come home. He hated the city, but he stayed there. Oh, he had big plans about coming home. But he never got beyond just having them as dreams. Do you understand him, Barbie? Could you figure him out? He's my husband, Dad. Explain him to me. You grew up with him right here on this very street. You married him. Explain why one minute he can be a gentle boy and the next minute a thug. Explain that. I can't. You can't, and you're his wife. I can't, and I'm his father. So let him stay where he is. Maybe they'll understand him there, Bobby. I love him, Dad. You know, when he was a little boy, I took him to a circus once. He liked the clowns. Went crazy about the clowns. Well, when they finished, everyone applauded. Except Joe. Joe wanted to know why the clowns went away. Was it because they knew that he was out there? Was it because they didn't like him? I held his hand and I tried to explain that they were just part of the circus. They were acrobats and animals. And you know what he said, Barbie? Try and figure this out. Joe told me that the clowns were against him. And from then on, clowns were his enemies. And he was only nine years old. It's always been... A feast or a famine with that boy of mine. Love or hate. Nothing in between. Love or hate. Why does he hate, Barbie? Why is he that way? Oh, I don't know. The day you two got married and you ran away, I sat here in this chair and I cried. Man's son gets married and he cries. But not for him, Barbie. Not for Joe. For you, because I knew what would happen, happen. Was he in jail? Twice. Why, what for? Stealing. Once he hit a man. Bad? Yes. And you stuck with him for three years. You should have a medal, Bobby. You stuck with him longer than that. But not anymore. Joe's in his element. Joe's in a big city where he can get his violence. That's for him. But you're here with me. He can fend for himself. He can pick his own life from now on. You're here with me. And that's what counts now. Except that I love him. I keep wondering what happened when he came back. And I wasn't there. Bad, Lieutenant. Looks very bad. Better get him to the hospital. Give me a hand, will you? Okay. I'll ride down to the hospital and keep you posted, Lieutenant. Okay, Jerry. You want monkey face in here? Yeah, bring him in. What's your name? I didn't do nothing. That's not a name. That's a lie. I was hanging around here, and this goon picked me up. What are you picking on an old man like me? Where'd you get the 33 bucks we found on you, huh? What was that, Social Security? Why, uh, uh, I want a lawyer. I know my rights. Look them. Robbery, assault, and inside of a couple hours, maybe murder. Murder? Hey, hey, hey. Wait a minute. No, I, I admit, I, I took the money out of the cash register, but... but I looked, looked in the front window, and the place looked empty, so I came in, and there was the old guy laying there. But I didn't touch him. Somebody already got to him. Give me a break, will you? I, I didn't commit no murder. I, I took the dough, yes, but th th there's a difference, a big yeah, difference. Six months or 99 years, a big difference. All right, have him take him downtown. Make it breaking and entering. No assault? Ah, him. He couldn't whip cream. Go ahead. Oh, they call you Papa and you Melt. 
Anything else, Lieutenant? Yeah. How far away is Flemingsburg? Where? Flemingsburg, New Jersey. I never heard of it. What's there? I don't know. What is there? I beg your pardon, sir. The first time I took the kid in, that's all he talked about. If we got off his back, he'd go back to hometown with the trees. That's what he said. Who said? Uh, one of my nightmares said it. One of those fresh-faced kids. Violence with big blue eyes. There's a lousy town. It's a lousy business. A lousy way to live. Now, my old man used to quote poetry to me all the time. He was a cop, like me, but he loved poetry. Good to forgive, best to forget. Living, we fret. Dying, we live. That's Browning. He who kills and runs away will live to kill another day. That's Case, the detective. Come on. You say you knew the old man? Papa Golden. He was wonderful to us. Had the delicatessen right next door. Says he's in critical condition. Somebody beat him up, huh? Somebody beat him up. A, a, a nice... A, a nice old man, you say? I said he was a nice old man. How many... Sorry, Dad. We both know what we're afraid of, don't we? It's Papa Golden that told me to leave. I thought about it, but... Maybe we're silly. After all, New York's a big place. There are lots of others. Other what? Other hoodlums? Like Joe? Beautiful morning. Beautiful. Morning, Fred. Morning, David. Got a letter from the boy today. I figure they'll be sending them back home about... Say, ain't you Bobby Andrews? <laughs> I mean, Bobby Harris? Yes, sir. I came in last night. Well, shucks, I'd never recognized you. How's Joe? He, he's fine. He, he's in New York. That a fact. Well, I was just about to tell Fred here that Billy's gonna come home real soon. He's been in Korea. His mother's ordering groceries and vegetables just like he was due back tomorrow. <laughs> well, don't blame her much. These kids, they grow up, marry, move away. You lose them so doggone quick. How'd you leave Joe, Bobby? He's fine. What's he doing now? He's thinking of opening a gas station. That a fact. Well, that's a good business. Folks, I gotta buy gas. <laughs> well, gotta go cut my lawn. That's what Saturday's for. October's been so warm, lawn's springing up just like it was spring. Well, be seeing you. Have a nice visit, Bobby. Hey, David. Yeah, Fred. I. I hope your boy comes home real soon. Don't think we don't. His mother's cleaned up his room six dozen times already. <laughs> Dad. That, that's the way it should be, you know. Children should be a joy to their folks. We can't be sure that he did it. We can't be positive. We can't... Oh, I'm just lying to myself. If he didn't do this, he'd do something else. He has done other things. Let's go in and have some more coffee. I'll heat it up. Beautiful street, Willow Street. It doesn't change at all. That's what Joe always said. It doesn't change, does it, Dad? back in a moment with the second act of A Long Time Till Dawn, featuring James Dean, and brought to you on the Kraft Television Theater by the Kraft Foods Company, who make or import the world's favorite kinds of cheese. Mm. 
We continue with the second act of A Long Time Till Dawn by Rod Serling. She married my son. What's your son's name? Joe. Kid in my class name is Joe. He ain't as big as me. How come I ain't never seen your son? Is he bigger than me? Yes, he's grown up. He lives out of town. He moved out of Flemingsburg before your folks came. Mr. Harris? What for? Mr. Gilchrist's son is in the army. In Korea. Talks about him all the time. You never talk about your son, do you? Well, I guess there isn't much to talk about. Joe's been gone a few years now. So is Mr. Gilchrist's son. Don't you like your son very much? Of, of course I like my son. Why shouldn't I? Oh, time to come in. Okay, Mom. Gotta go. Night, Mr. Harris. Good night, Paul. Surprise. Yes, who? <laughs> Come on, Dad. You can say hello and say goodbye. You say something. All right. Hello, Joe. How's that? It's tender. It's uh, very, very fatherly. But, Dad, you know, I've been away three years. Is that it? That's it. I'll come see my wife. I know she's here. She's gone out. Do you mind if I wait? No. Wait if you like. I'd like to. Oh, uh, I'm going to stay for a while. Well, this is your home, Joe. Stay as long as you like. How long would you like? I don't care anymore. I stopped caring a long time ago. Well, you know, the place looks the same. Looks nice. You know, for all, I, I thought about it a lot of times. About the place, about the street. You know, I, I meant to come back a lot of times, but I just never quite got around to it until now. Did you forget how to write in New York? No, I intended to write that. I really did. Uh, I'm not giving you the business either, because if you could just read my mind... I don't want to read your mind. You got anything else pleasant to say? Dad, you, Dad, look, I, I want to start over again. I, re I really want to try it again. I, wa I want to work here, and I want to live here. Doing well, what? Well, I thought I'd get me a, a garage. I'd have to borrow the money. Did you work in a garage? Was that your business? No, well, I did my best. You to... did your best. Well, I did. You I... robbed, you beat up people, you ran around, and that was your best. Well, then what was your worst? Oh, knock it off. You Dad. expect me to kill the fatted calf because one fine day you decided to come home? Well, I expect the, the fair shake from my own father. Which means what? That you come into this house and in five minutes you expect well, well, your father to... give me a to... chance! Look, Dad, see, I... I made a mistake. No, I'm not going to make those mistakes anymore. That's what it means. All right, Joe. All right, I'll fix the bed for you. Dad, Dad, uh, I want to... Listen, did you ever... Were you ever hungry to come to a place? I mean, you know, so hungry that when you took a breath, it hurt you inside. Well, 
That's the way I feel about this place. And about the street, about you and Barbie. Dad, you know, I got a big knot in the inside of me. Just a great big knot. Well, what do you think I've got? Stay, Joe, if you want to. If Barbie wants you to. But forgive me if I can't feel sorry for you. Well, it's just like it was. You didn't change a thing, Dad. That football, you didn't move it an inch. Why should I? <laughs> you know, I could have stayed out in the hall, and I could have told you where everything was. Pictures, books, the football. Yeah, I never forgot. I had it in my mind all the time. <laughs> oh, lots of memories. <laughs> They're not memories. They're remnants. They're fragments. They're all that's left of Joe Harris as a little kid. So what am I now, huh? God knows what you are now. God knows. Dad? Dad, who are you talking to? Joe. Oh, Joe. Barbie. Oh, Barbie. How long has it been? Oh, six months, that's all. So? Hey. I went up where we lived before. Landlady says, you moved out. Honey, I almost went crazy. Oh. But you know, I came back here. Papa Golden tell you? Who? Oh, the old man? Oh, no, no, I didn't see him. I just figured that this is about the only place you'd come to. Ask him again. Ask me what? Joe, Papa Golden was... What, what? Beaten up the night you got out of jail. You think I did it? Well, I, I like the old man. You know I like the old man, don't you, Barbie? You did like him. Sure, he's about the only friend I had there. What'd I do a thing like that for? Why would you do any of the things you've done? Mistakes. Haven't you ever made a mistake? Huh? Now, look. I serve my time. I am home. I'm in my own house here. You're my father. It's my wife. We have a deal, Dad. Sure, it was the first time we got a real deal here. And we're going to be happy. Joe. Why? Did you hurt the old man? I never touched him. Barbie, I never... You know, I never touched him. I never even saw him, Barbie. I believe you, Joe. I believe you, darling. Mm. The Joe? Yeah. Not like before. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, from scratch, Dad. Right from scratch. No more trouble. I'm home now. I'm on Willow Street. I'm home. I believe you, son. Welcome home. Welcome home, Joe. <laughs> you are <bad. laughs> Good. That's nectar of the uh, 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 nectar of the god. Nectar of the god, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Night out. You know, I used to be afraid of night in the city. I really did. I never was here. I'm not now. Mm, it's beautiful here. So nice and quiet. You know, I I told Dad that I could shut my eyes. And I could remember everything about it. And I did. You know, remember me talking all the time about old Willow Street? See, I, I, I really missed it. What is it? Now, what do they call that? You, uh, when you think of a place that you grew up in. Um, nostalgia. Uh, yeah, yeah, nostalgia, nostalgia. It's a funny feeling, you know. It, it kind of hurts, and yet... Uh, you know what I mean? Sure. 
Tired? Yeah, I'm, I'm awful tired. Seems like I just stopped running after three years. Bobby, I'm gonna make those three years up to you. They were crummy years, I know. I'm gonna make them up to you. Uh, how do I love thee, old Willow Street? Let me count the ways. You remember that poem you taught me that? Well, that was a, that was a million years ago. Just kids. Look at it now. Wait. You could walk from one end to the other in three minutes. Dinky town, dinky street. <laughs> you know, you're just living by on the front porch. Ice cream socials and weddings and a general store. Well, that, that's it. But I love it. I've always loved it. You have too, haven't you? Yeah. Um... This is going to be the greatest Barbie. Somehow I'm going to make you forget everything. Somehow I'm going to get me a garage. Somehow, is that I... a magic word? Somehow this, somehow that. That's the somehows, Joe. Well, I'm a somehow guy. <laughs> oh, you know, I seen your old house tonight. It looked pretty good. I know, I walked by it yesterday. Well, we're going to have a house. Just like that. Somehow. Can you listen to that night? Oh, I'd love to listen to the sounds. What was it you used to say about sounds? What was it? Each was a key to a file on memory. Yeah, yeah. You think of a sound and then and then you this makes you think of the other times that you heard it. And you remember things. You used to be a kid. Oh, Johnny Renzio. Johnny Renzio. That's before you moved here. Every night, he'd be right out here in front, and he'd yell up to me, Yo, Joey. Come on down and play, Joey. Joey. Boy, I wish he was like that again. Playing ball in the lot and swimming in the river, buying ice cream from a guy in a yellow wagon. <laughs> uh, remember him? He used to ring a little bell. You, you remember, remember that? <laughs> they were my sounds then. I wasn't barring them, just remember. They were my sounds. And old Willow Street here. In my street. Bobby, can you reach back and get it like it all was again? You can try, Joe. Bye, bye, bye. Let's try. Sure, Joe. Oh. Late? You're tired. <sighs> Do you want to go to bed, Joe? Oh. Uh, well, let's take a walk first. Okay? Okay. David? That you over there on the porch? Yep. Pretty night, nice, huh? Yeah. My, uh, my boy came home this evening. Joe? Yeah. Yeah, he's going to settle down here. He may go into a gas station. I think that's fine, Fred. Yeah, I, I've been upstairs cleaning up his room all evening. You know how it is when your kids come home? Sure do. Say hello to him for me. Tell him to come over and see us. Sure will. I'll tell him. Sure thing. You betcha. Uh, evening. You Fred Harris? Why, yes, that's me. Name's Case. Police Department, New York City. Well, uh, sit down, Mr. Case. Uh, Thanks. How, how can I help you? It's pretty here, huh? Yeah. Uh, now about... Oh, uh, about your son, uh, Joe, Joe Harris. Uh, he is your son, isn't he? 
Oh, yes. Joe's my boy. Is he here? Well, no, he isn't here. Why? What, what's he done? Well, I don't know. There's an old delicatessen. Oh, uh, Golden, Papa Golden. Yes, we, we heard about it, but that wasn't Joe's work. You know that for sure. Huh? Joe's trying again. He's come home to his hometown to start all over. Yeah, well, I'd like to talk to him. Well, of course, he, he should be back. He just went for a walk. Oh, well, wait. <clears throat> you, uh... You, you met Joe? Yeah, I met him. I booked him twice, Mr. Harris. Oh, I... I, I see. He's... He, he's a strange boy, officer. But he's coming around now. For the first time, he, he seems to be coming around. He's a hard boy to understand, but he's really not a bad kid. You don't think he is, do you? Uh, yeah, I'm afraid I do, Mr. Harris. Well, I'm giving him a chance. I think he'll come through. Well, that's your privilege. I believe in my son. I don't know, Harris. Like you say, he's, he's strange. It's a funny combination. He's a poet, and he's a gangster. He's a sensitive kid, but you, you go to look for remorse in him or a conscience. He's got brains. His logic's like a little boy's. How close am I? A pretty warm, huh? The old man got very badly beaten up. It points to Joe. Why Joe? Well, as far as we know, Joe was the last person with him. But that doesn't prove anything. No. That's why I want to talk to Joe. If he hasn't got the right answers, I've got extradition papers from the state of New Jersey. My orders are to bring him back. Relax, Mr. Howard. Yeah, yeah, relax, relax. It's pretty here. Real pretty. Hey, no, I noticed some decorations down along the main drag there. There was the pumpkins and things. Oh, yeah, every every year we have a fall festival. They, they call it the harvest time. Every year we have it. I used to take Joe when he was a little kid. What will be the harvest this year, Mr. Detective? What will be Joe's harvest? You've got a tongue, Mr. Detective. Can't you answer? What will be Joe's harvest? A bullet? <laughs> We'll be back in a moment with the third act of A Long Time Till Dawn featuring James Dean. We continue with the third act of A Long Time Till Dawn by Rod Serling. There's somebody in the living room to see you. See me? Yes. Well, who is it? Hello, Joe. What do you want? Short answers. All of them honest. Uh, well, uh, don't you get any sleep? Uh, insomnia. Your papa golden. Oh, yeah, I, uh, I read that in the newspaper. Oh, how is he? He's unconscious. He's only got an even chance. Joe. All right, Joe. Did you do it? I told you that he didn't do it. Well, Joe loved Papa Golden. He was the only one nice to us. Yeah, I didn't touch him. No, well, Joe didn't even see him. He saw he? him all right. I was there. I left right after you did. I didn't see him again. If you can't prove that, you better start packing your bags. He can prove it. Yeah? That's right. That's right. I, I was there waiting for Joe. Uh, Barbie and I were waiting. Where? Uh, outside. We know he couldn't have done it because we were outside. We heard him say goodbye. It, it didn't, didn't we, Barbie? Well, I know you'd tell the truth, Mr. Harris, but uh, I'm a little puzzled why you didn't say something before. You said you wanted to see the boy? Yeah. Well, I guess I'll have to look further, huh, Joe? Well, that's a big disappointment. No, no, no. no. I like your dad here. Kind of glad the way it turned out. Well, good luck, Joe, with the... Uh, what was that, a gas station? 
Good luck with the gas station, Joe. Well, I've got to run along. We'll have to stop and tell the sheriff that everything's all right here. Would you let us know about Papa Golden? Yeah, sure, if you want me to. Please, he's such a sweet old man. Oh, I don't know. I'll see that you're notified. All right. Joe, you lied. You said you never saw Papa Golden. Well, I had to. If I hadn't, you wouldn't have believed me. What did you do to the old man? Oh, lay off of me, will you? I said nothing, nothing. Why, why does everybody try to get on my back? My own father, my own wife. You lied! Yes, so did you, Pa. Yes, yes, because I, I had a lump inside me, too, and a nightmare. And then, for a few hours, it seemed pleasant, and I didn't want it to change. Why, it doesn't have to change, Dad. Not at all. Because, well, we're going to start all over again. What if Papa Golden dies? Well, I feel bad, honestly. I feel real bad. Oh, honey, I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to sleep good. I'm home, and I'm not afraid of the night anymore. I'll sleep good. Good night. Maybe he didn't do it. Would we ever be sure? He says he'll sleep good. But you and I, Bob, you and I, we can never sleep again. Oh, and it was... It was so good to have him home. So good to have a real son again. So good to have a dream instead of a nightmare. But deep down inside, I, I knew it wasn't real. Somehow I, I knew it wasn't real. But you know, if you hope hard enough, it seems real. It seems so real. Hear that? That's old man Donovan. He can't sleep again. Just playing that old violin. What was it you used to say about a violin at night? What difference does it make? No, no, honey. You know what was it? You got away with words. Sure. I. What I feel. What I got inside of me. You. You can say. It. That's the way I remember it. Yeah, I had a dream. Come here. It was it was an autumn night, like tonight, and uh, we're gonna have a harvest festival. And uh, old man Donovan was playing his violin just like now. And that kid, Johnny Renzio, he was. Out in front, and he was yelling, "You, Joey, come on down, Joey, come on down and play again." And I said, "I said no, not tonight, because I'm going to go out with Barbie. I'm going to take her walk, and I'm going to buy her some ice cream." <laughs> and I had a goofy dream. <laughs> and a <I> goofy. <laughs> Uh, you know, you know, some guys want velvet. Some guys want the world. Not me. Boy, I'd just like to hear old Johnny Renzi again. Yo, Joey. Oh, Joey, come on down, Joey. <laughs> oh, honey. I'll be right back. Yes. Uh, yes, Lieutenant. Oh, I, I see. Yes, I'll, I'll tell them. Uh, thank you for calling. That, that was Lieutenant Case. They just sent a message to him at the sheriff's office. The old man died a few minutes ago. He never regained consciousness. You'd, you'd better tell Joe. Joe? Oh, I couldn't sleep anymore. Papa Golden died. Well? We ought to go back. Back? In New York? You crazy? I got my crawl full of that stinking town. Uh, haven't you? He, he was our friend. So is our friend. Well, he wouldn't be right. Let away, will you? He's dead. 
And he, it wouldn't do him any good if we went back now, would it? He was our friend and he died, Joe. Can't you shut those things out of your mind? Can't you just think of the good things like the night and the music? Huh? I can't shut everything out. Well, you got it. We got a chance now. We can have something. How can I believe that? Because I'm telling you that's why. What's the matter with you? Are you going to be like the rest of them? Huh? And you two, why'd you light a case? I didn't ask you to. And yet you thought I did it. You thought I beat up the old man. I saw it in your eyes. I saw it in your face. I saw it in both of your faces. Why didn't you just come right out and say it? Because we didn't want to believe it. Oh, you're all against me, that's what. Joe. Joe. Joe, did you beat up the old man? He had no business button there. I didn't mean to kill him, Bobby. I didn't mean to kill him. Your father's going to call the police. Well, we still got time to get away. You going with me? No, Joe. Never going with you again. Well, we got time. We can still beat this. <laughs> sure, you know, we'll go away and we'll get a nice little town. We'll find one just like this one. Sure. Well, it was too late years ago. <laughs> what? 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 What'd you say? Huh? No, Bobby, no, this is not the way I want it. This is not the way I want it at all. I'd want it like it was. In the old days. It never was that way, except in your... No! I remember it. Bobby, I remember it. I know. I remember it. Joe, I want you to come with me now and give yourself up to Mr. Case. No. And goodbye, Joe. Bobby. Bobby? All right, go on. Go on, then. Go on! You're just like all the rest of them. You're all against me. All of you. All of you! All right, Sheriff, you go around the back there. Johnny, you cover the side door there, will you? Sully, get over there and flash your light up on those windows there, will you? All right, Joe. It's time to be smart, Joe. You got three minutes, Joe. Put down your gun and come on down, or we'll come in after you, Joe. You're crazy! All of you are crazy! No. It was not supposed to be like this. <laughs> I just wanted the way it was. I didn't want to like this. I just wanted the way it was. Throw your gun down, Joe. Put up your hands and throw your gun down. You hear me? Joey. Come on down. Come on down, Joey. Johnny. Johnny, Johnny Rencio. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Johnny, boy, I'm coming, I'm coming down, boy. Joe, I said put that gun down. Look, honey, you got a gun back here. Come and get me. We can't take any more chances. Let him have it. All right, everybody, go back inside. It's all over. Everybody, their own houses. And what do we do now? Mr. Detective, thank you. The menace is destroyed. Do we thank you? Shouldn't there be a celebration? 
You happy now? Yeah. Yeah, I just saw a 23-year-old kid get shot to death. That makes me very happy. Makes me proud of my job. I got a kid, too. Makes sense, does it? It's a long night, Bobby. It's a long time till dawn. But it's getting brighter. I can see it. Lights are still on. The sun must have come home. Yes, I I think I can see him in the living room. That's a great thing for a son to come home. That's a great thing. <laughs> The Craft Television Theater has just presented A Long Time Till Dawn by Rod Serling. We hope you've enjoyed our players and our play. Here's how to get tonight's recipes free. Just send a postcard with your name and address and the name of the recipe you'd like to Kraft Television Recipes, Box 1718, Chicago 77, Illinois. Because your comments aid us in the selection of future plays and future casts, they're always most welcome. Won't you drop a card or letter to the Kraft Television Theater in care of the station to which you are tuned? In a moment, tonight's cast, but first a word from Kraft. And now the cast in tonight's production. Our faith in God is the ultimate source of our strength and our freedom. The free participation in religious services has given form to the whole structure of American living. To maintain a way of life based on the lasting principles of religion means to uphold our religious institutions. Support the church or synagogue of your choice by attending with your family this week and throughout the year. This is Ed Hurley. He's speaking and inviting you to be with us each week for two full-hour plays. One on Wednesday evening and one on Thursday evening. Tomorrow night on another network, the Kraft Television Theater will present The Bitter Wind, an original television play by Roger Garris. Next Wednesday evening on this same network, you will see The Gate by Kathleen Crawford Lindsay. Played by fine cast of Broadway actors, these two plays, The Bitter Wind, tomorrow night, and The Gate, next Wednesday night, will be brought to you on the Kraft Television Theater by the Kraft Foods Company. <laughs>